Donc, euh, bonsoir tout le monde. Donc, euh, nous vous souhaitons la bienvenue. Donc, euh, nous lançons le thème 4 intitulé « Progrès et application des biotechnologies dans la filière viande des produits carnés ». Donc, nous nous enchaînons directement avec euh, la conférence du professeur Santandro Miguel, qui est un chercheur euh, en sciences alimentaires en Espagne. Donc, il est responsable du laboratoire de biochimie de, de la viande au niveau de l'Institut de l'agrochimie et des technologies alimentaires à Valence. Donc, euh, est-ce que vous nous écoutez, Miguel Bonjour. So, um, good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. It's a good pleasure for me to be here and uh, thank you the, to the organizers for, for giving me the opportunity to present uh, this talk which has the title Discovery of Novel Predictors of Big Quality res Defects Using Proteomics and Assessment of Postmortem Apoptosis. Uh, here I will highlight the main uh, achievement that we have uh, currently done in our research dealing with um, the quality of bovine meat. So, first of all, let me show you some introductory ideas about the bovine meat production chains. It has several steps, as you know, which is the rearing system. It can be extensive, intensive, transport of animals to the abattoir, slaughter, then the um, storage in a cold uh, chambers to, for meat aging. And uh, despite of these uh, processes highly standardized in the industry, uh, one of the main problems that the industry has to face is the great variability in the quality of the final product uh, reaching the market, which causes a great insatisfaction, insatisfaction for, by, by consumers. So uh, most of this uh, lack of homogeneity, one of the maybe the main uh, reasons can be the pre-slaughter stress of animals, which is going to negatively influence the glycolysis rate, as we will see later. So, among the factors influencing the glycolysis rate can be some intrinsic to the animal, brick, uh, muscle type, gender, age, and others that are extrinsic to the animals. Among those, the most important or the most that we need more control uh, are the ones that are highlighted in the, in the black square and of them the feeding, transport, layerage, condition and social mixing, social mixing that means mixing animals uh, and no animals among others are between the causes, uh, the main causes of press louder stress. This press louder stress is going to cause a muscle glycogen depletion, which is going to uh, be the responsible for the occurrence of uh, meat defects such as the known PSE meat, pale, soft, and exudative, and DFD meat, uh, dark, firm, and dry meats. So, how uh, how the glycolysis rates affect the uh, occurrence of defects? In postmortem muscle, the anoxia conditions uh, forces that the only way to produce energy is via the glycolysis. So, glyco glycogen glucose will be transformed uh, to lactic acid due to the production of energy via the ATP, and this causes a drop in the pH below 6, generating the normal um, look of uh, currently normal meat. What happens in a stress situation? In, a, in, a, in animal that has been pre slaughtered stressed, has suffered stress previous to slaughter, it has the glycogen and uh, glucose reserve uh, lowered. So that will create via the glycolysis a lower production of lactic acid, but consequently the final pH of that meat will be above 6. And the final consequence is a meat known as DFD meat, uh, characterized or what it means, dark, firm, and dry. Dark and firm and dry because this, uh, this meat uh, has a very high uh, water retention. So uh, the aspect is really unacceptable for consumer, and it's a big problem for the current industry. So. This, uh, under this context, we uh, propose our initial hypothesis 
to conduct our research, which is that the effective traits characterizing DFD meats would be the consequence of alterations in some key metabolic processes of post-mortem muscle responsible for the conversion of muscle into meat. So, taking this in mind, we propose that our main objective will be to investigate the biochemical processes, mainly dealing with uh, changes in the protein profile and uh, alterations in the apoptosis process that take place in bovine muscle during the first 24 hours post-mortem and to study their relationships with the characteristics of DFD meats. The final objective of that would be to discover novel predictors capable to accurately detect those defective meats at early post-mortem times in order to be uh, properly classified uh, and not to be entered into the market, so increasing the homogeneity of, uh, and quality of uh, meats. Let me say that uh, this work, most of uh, it has been a framework under the PhD work of uh, Mrs. Uh, Claudia Fuente Garcia. So, the overall workflow we have divided into two sections. One was the study, proteomic studies which uh, included the development of a working uh, a protocol, including a fractionation of uh, muscle-soluble protein by isoelectric focusing, focus, uh, followed by SDS page and uh, liquid chromatography mass spectrometry analysis. And the second part would be the uh, study of caspase activity of most muscle, and this will be done first by the optimization of a fluorimetric assay capable to and sensitive and accurate measurement of caspase activity in a skeletal muscle and then the application of that protocol to the determination of caspase activity level in meats having different ultimate pH values. So in the first uh, in the for the proteomic approach, we developed the following experimental design. We had a total number of uh, 16 uh, bovine animals that were eight of them belonged to a pure breed, pure Spanish breed called Asturiana de los Valles, and eight of uh, them were crossbreed animals. So for all of them, we made a pH measurement of, uh, of muscle. And then this allowed us to first a classification between normal meat, all, uh, all meats above pH 6, and DFD meats, which were all of them above pH 6. So below normal, above uh, DFD meats. And then after that, we will uh, proceed with the proteome analysis of these uh, uh, meats. So, we proposed uh, to make enriched uh, pro protein, uh, enriched protein extracts from soluble protein by using fractionation using a liquid isoelectrophocusing. We will separate proteins according through their isoelectric point. This will allow us then to uh, connect with separation by uh, polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis, giving a profile similar to what you, ha uh, what you are seeing. And uh, finally, couplet to the identification of bands using uh, mass spectrometry analysis. So, here you can see the difference between a normal separation in uh, SDS page. All proteins of the extract will be separated in one lane, whereas if we applied a previous fractionation step using off uh, fractionation, those proteins in one lane will be spread over a total of 12 fractions. So we will uh, manage to have a much uh, better separation profile and so uh, it would be e easier to detect uh, protein difference among the different type of meats. So under this uh, working scheme, 
we uh, do the following. We applied the this uh, protein preparation protocol for each of the animals uh, of the study. So we obtained for each of them one uh, gel with 12 uh, separated fractions. After that, we carried out uh, image analysis for quanti band quantification in order to know a difference in protein abundance between normal and DFD meat and those having significant uh, differently abundant will be selected and then uh, we will try to identify them by liquid chromatography coupled to mass spectrometry. So here I'm going to show you the main uh, proteomic results. These are the separation profile between normal and DFD meats. You can see very nice uh, protein profile. And interestingly, we can see some uh, significant uh, difference in abundance of some proteins, as the one you are uh, uh, looking at. So band A, for instance, it would be um, more abundant in DFD meats. Contrarily, band V uh, was overrepresented in normal meats and interestingly also there were a group of three proteins bands C, D and A which were exclusively found in DFD meats. So using this uh, uh, bands, the, the quantitative result as variables for uh, making a principal component analysis, we try to discriminate the different animals. So interestingly, we see, we see that the principal component one was able to discriminate, clearly discriminate, between normal and DFD samples. But moreover, the system, the second component, was able to discriminate normal samples coming from either the pure breed, the Asturian de los Valles breed, from crossbreed animals. So we found the results very interesting because these proteins can uh, clearly discriminate normal meats from defective meats. After that, we carried out the identification of those proteins band, and these are the obtained results. Band A, A sorry, was uh, identified as actin, band V was phosphoglucomutase 1, band C was a hydro protein, alpha crystalline V, and band D and E were also uh, two heat shock proteins named heat shock protein V6 and heat shock protein beta, beta 1. Those, I think, as I uh, have uh, told you, very uh, and very coherent uh, and interesting uh, proteomic results. What are the biological function of the identified proteins? Phosphoglucomutase 1 uh, is classified into the metabolic enzyme and is implicated in uh, all the glycolysis uh, pathways. So it's logical to be uh, overabundant in normal uh, meats because depleted glycogen reserves due to pre-slaughter stress will modify the regulation level of glycolytic enzymes. So less glycogen stores in DFD meats, less expression of phosphoglucomutase. Heat shock proteins has a stress defense proteins and the presence exclusively in DFD meats seems to be logical and also this is in accordance to the literature because they will have a protective role uh, under the condition of stressful conditions. And finally, actin uh, is also related to heat shock protein because those proteins will have a, a protective role against actin. So, as a concluding remark, we can say that uh, the success, it has been the success of the level, developed workflow for protein characterization using previous off gel uh, fractionation coupled to SDS page and identification by LC mass spectrometry analysis. This has allowed us to characterize uh, high pH meat samples by the existence of heat shock proteins not existing in normal meats. And this is quite interesting and it's linked to the second part of our study because heat shock protein has an anti-apoptotic role. So it will exert a uh, 
protection against the apoptosis onset and uh, will act trying to diminish the caspase activity in muscle. So, uh, the second part of our study was to study the triggering of caspase activity in uh, post-mortem muscle of the different type uh, mid qualities. So, to do that, we first carried out our optimization of a fluorometric assay for a sensitive detection of caspase 3 and 7 activities and this is very important because the activity, caspase activity in a skeletal muscle is quite low so you need to have a really very sensitive and accurate uh, system to measure the, the, that, this, activi this activity. Uh, one after that, this we will be applying this, uh, uh, this uh, activity measurement to determination of caspase activity in midst of different ultimate pH values. Here I would like to highlight the importance of uh, apoptosis as uh, one of the key events in the transformation of muscle uh, into meat. This was already hypothesized by the work of Wally and co-workers co in 2006 and this autos hypothesized at that time that probably uh, one of the first and main events uh, occurring in the transformation of muscle into meat would be the onset of cell death of apoptosis. And uh, after that hypothesis, uh, there has been many research groups that has confirmed this hypothesis and now is uh, uh, worldwide uh, accepted the occurrence of apoptosis in, uh, in post muscle transformation into meat. However, this has been mainly studied in relation to meat quality and tenderness, but this has not been studied that in relation to pre slaughter state and uh, occurrence of defective meat. So, from this uh, situation, we establish the following hypothesis to, the, to study apoptosis in DFD meats. According to our hypothesis, we propose that uh, in DFD meats, there would be an early activation of apoptosis due to pre slaughter stress situation. This early activation will mean that apoptosis in those stressed animals would start before animal slaughter in the in vivo muscle. So, the early uh, stimuli to trigger apoptosis in vivo would be the increase of cortisol levels and the decrease of glycogen, glycogen and glucose level. The final uh, consequence of that will be activation of apoptosis by the increase of space 3-7 activity and this will notably influence or directly uh, inf uh, be responsible for the uh, occurrence of DFD meets. So, in order to prove if that hypothesis, in order to support that hypothesis, we, we develop the following experimental design. We, this time now, we took a total of 20 bovine animals from the Spanish breed Retinta Extremeña. As before, we did a, classifi a first classification according to the pH value in normal and DFD meats. In that case, normal meat was below 5.9 and DFD meats would be those uh, meats uh, about 5.9. Uh, so we carried out the extraction of soluble proteins and then from the soluble proteins, we uh, develop a caspase activity assay based on a fluorogenic substrate specific of caspase 3 and 7. Uh, this was done in a multi microtiter multi-way plate in order to perform as um, many analyses as possible. So, the results of our research in that part are the following. Um, we measure the cortisol levels among the different types of uh, breed and interestingly, DFD meats has a notably higher cortisol levels with respect to normal animals. Lactate um, levels were pretty similar between the two anima, animals, if, even in DFD uh, meats were not a slightly higher, which seems to be a bit uh, controversial because we would have expected the contrary, but maybe we should have to investigate why. Maybe this uh, lactate production was further on uh, utilized in other uh, biochemical pathways we will investigate. And the glucose 
was also in accordance to our hypothesis because the the levels of glucose in um, in DFD meats are, were notably lower than in normal muscles. And what is more interesting, the caspase activity 37 was notably higher in DFD meats compared to normal individuals. So this could support our hypothesis that DFD meats will have increased uh, apoptosis. Excusez-nous. Yeah? Pardon, oui? Uh, oui? Miguel, excusez-nous, il vous reste trois minutes. Okay, I'm going okay. just to, to finish. Okay. These are the, the main uh, uh, PCA components using uh, space activity, and we see that this clearly separate normal and DFD animals. Only two normal animals were classified as it were uh, DFD meat animals, and this proves that in fact those samples were initially classified as normal uh, samples, but in fact the appearance was as DFD meat. So this proves that um, pH measurement is not an enough criterion to clearly classify uh, DFD defective meats. And so as a conclusion, we can say that Comparison of sarcoplasmic proteins from beef of different qualities was successfully implemented using uh, of your fractionation strategy. Proteomic results reveal overabundance of actin, alpha crystalline B, heteroprotein B6, and heteroprotein B1 in the meats. And phosphoglucomutase was overrepresented in normal meats. This could be associated to animals that have presumably suffered preslaughter stress. Measurement of caspase activity in muscle allow a clear discrimination between normal and DFD meats at 24 hours post-mortem. This would confirm the hypothesis that an early activation of apoptosis in muscle from stressed animals. And as an overall conclusion, we can say that proteomic tools and caspase activity assays prove the usefulness as new and reliable predictors to discriminate and differences between the different bit qualities. And so this is the, the, the end of my presentation. And finally, just to tell you that this project is a collaborative project between three research uh, institutes in Spain. And this has been under the framework of Smart Big Project. So I thank all the colleagues uh, working in that project. So I thank you very much for your attention.